Welcome to another TCGU video brought to you by the Chariot Group. My name is Bob Jackman and what we're going to do is we're going to start a series of videos that will provide you training on how to use your smart board or other interactive whiteboard with smart notebook software. And so this is kind of the beginning of that. To begin, I want to introduce myself. My name is Bob Jackman. I, I live in Utah. I've taught several years in Utah and I got recruited to, to do this. And I've enjoyed working for the Chariot Group, teaching teachers all across several states how to use their smart boards more effectively in the classroom. And so I've got a lot of experience working with teachers and, and helping them integrate this into their classroom teaching. So I hope you enjoy this journey as we go through and start learning how to use your smart board more effectively. So to start talking about how you use your smart board in the classroom, there's, there's basically four levels at which teachers kind of fall and they start using their smart boards in the classroom. And the first is kind of a starting place. They, they use it as a whiteboard. So they take, a lot of times they'll put the smart board right over their existing whiteboard. And so what they'll do is they'll just transfer from doing it on the dry erase board to writing on the smart board. And that's a great starting place because it's very familiar. It's very simple and easy, uh, easy place to start. The other thing is using existing resources. So whether that be pulling up websites or going to the smart exchange and downloading lessons other teachers have created and using those in the classroom. So there's already stuff there. There's no reason to, to go out and reinvent the wheel. Just start with some existing resources and you're gonna find that the smart board is a, a huge addition to your classroom. It'll help you be a lot more effective. The second level is we start taking those existing lessons and we start um, modifying those. So we're differentiating that based on our teaching needs, based on our teaching preferences, based on the needs of the students. And so we're just modifying those lessons to fit what we know as educators is probably the best for our students. And so that starts to be the, the second level. And, and moving into that level can be uh, scary for some teachers, but very natural for others. So uh, don't, don't worry if you, where you fit on that, it's, it's pretty normal. The next level after that is teachers start to create their own lessons. And they don't necessarily have to create them completely from scratch, but they may. And so they're starting to engage the students more, starting to create more interactivity. So instead of it being very PowerPoint-ish where we're just showing information. We're really encouraging those students as we get into two and level two and three here, we're encouraging those students to come up and participate and interact with the content. We don't want this just to be uh, a glorified PowerPoint. Uh, we want it to be very engaging for and for students. And then the last section is we, we see teachers really starting to reach out and help other teachers learn how to use this. Maybe that's presenting at conferences, maybe it's doing simple trainings in their school or just leading trainings and showing these videos at the school that can be very uh, helpful. So we see teachers kind of fall into different places and they may be a little bit of everything. Uh, and that's okay, so learning is a process and it's gonna be something you learn over time. And these videos are just a resource to help you with that process. So this training that, we've, that I'm creating for you here on, on the YouTube is to help you expand that capability. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna split that into three major sections. And so the first one is going to be that basic, you know, whiteboard using existing resources. The second one's going to go into a little bit more of the skills to be able to modify those lessons and use them better in your classroom and, and differentiate those. And then the third section is going to be just more in depth, all the things you need to know to create wonderful lessons. And so even if you don't want to create your own lessons, it's helpful to go through those because there may be things you could add to your existing lessons that can be beneficial. Each of these three large sections is going to be broken up into smaller subsections. And the reason for that is nobody wants to sit through two hours of training uh, and, and just get thrown a bunch of information all at once. And so we break these into smaller pieces to enable you to have more digestible sections uh, so that it's, it's easier to understand and that gives you a smaller section to learn and then you can go apply that as you go. There's also I can statements for each of these subsections. So those are the basic skills. Those are the things you should be able to walk away being able to do. Uh, and so it's helpful because you can look at those I can statements and say, hey, I already know how to do these. I don't really need to watch this training. Or you could also look at those at the end and say, hey, look what I can do now that I've learned this. Or maybe that's a, a review to say, oh, I can't do this. Maybe I need to go back and watch that section again. So that'll help you have some confidence that you are learning and that you're able to do more as you go. So how do we go through and learn this? Besides just sitting and watching them, here's a couple of tricks. First is get together with others, whether that be you know, your team, uh, a couple other teachers at your school that also wanna learn how to use their smart boards, or maybe that's organizing and doing it in faculty meeting once a, month, once a week or once a month. Find a way to work with others because working with others is gonna provide a great collaborative experience. 
you're, you're sharing your minds. There's things that you know that they may not know. There's things they may know that you don't know that everybody has different experiences. So they'll bring a lot to that table and enhance your learning. Um, that, that'll come into play a lot more later as well. Watching and following along. So watch the videos, follow along on your computer, pause it, you know, rewatch a section, follow along, try to do what I'm doing. That can be very helpful. That's part of the reason why I created these videos in the first place is teachers were saying, you know, we've got questions, we want to see it again, but we don't want to bug you. So I created these videos and they can watch the videos as many times as you need to so that you can understand how to, how to do something. It's kind of funny, there was a, a, a group of students in Southern Utah that were teaching teachers how to use technology. And some of the students were frustrated with the teachers because they couldn't learn it. And they were really struggling, how do we help these teachers learn? It was really kind of funny, the, 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 the role play change in that. And one particular student was very frustrated with a teacher that couldn't learn and was just really frustrated. And so the, the, the teacher that was kind of supporting this group was about to help and another student said, oh no, I got this, this is really easy. And it turns to the student and says, it's really easy. All you have to do is you, when you talk to the teacher, you ask them, how many years have you been teaching? And whatever number they tell you, that's how many times you're gonna to have to show them until they get it. And so that's kind of funny, you know, it's, it gets a good chuckle. And, and so some teachers are like, man, I've got, a, I've got a lot of years of teaching under my belt. I'm gonna to have to see this a lot of times. Don't be embarrassed by that, but think about it this way. If you've been teaching 20 years and it takes you five times of seeing it before you get it, you're ahead of the game. So it's a great way to think about that. It's, we all learn through repetition. There's a reason why you know, math teachers will have you work on a problem and then give you several problems to work on. It's just that practice. And so seeing it multiple times and, and practicing that is, is not a bad thing. Uh, so that's what the videos are help you do is you can go back and watch it as many times as you want. Watch it with your group and then go back and watch it again and, and, and apply that. Next section, applying that to your classroom. We're going to show you uh, some overarching concepts. We're going to show you some tools and how those tools work. The trick is to say, all right, well, you know, it's great. I can do this. I can do that. But if that at the end of the day, that doesn't help you teach your curriculum. If, if you teach third grade math, you need to know how to teach third grade math with these tools. And so that bridging that gap can sometimes be difficult and sometimes be very easy. And that again goes back to that idea of working with others because that'll give you another reference point, uh, other people to bounce ideas off. And it's really cool when you start getting into that, seeing how this tool can help you teach those things you need to teach more effectively. Uh, and so the more you can engage with other people and get other ideas, that's gonna be helpful. And that's what's gonna make this a really important tool is learning how to apply what you're learning into teaching in the classroom. Other thing is share with others as you, as you make that bridge that gap and come up with ideas, share those with others. Share these videos with others. Share the learning that you're getting with others so that as a, as a profession as a whole, we can succeed. We're a very collaborative group, teachers are, and we wanna help each other. We don't wanna be competitive and, and keep all our secrets to ourselves. We wanna share those with others. So please share this with others. And that's, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna move on. The, the, the next video, we'll start the training. There'll be different videos based on the different models of smart boards. Uh, if you don't see your particular model of smart board there, just get the closest you can. Uh, and then each one after that will be pretty generic for whatever board you have. So hope you enjoy this series of training and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to share.